Hi everyone, I'm Yang Peng. And I'm Beth Woodward. We're representing Brownwood School. Our research question is how glucose affects the behavior and dopaminergic activity in C. elegans in order to investigate ADHD in school-age children. We hypothesize that higher glucose intake will decrease the osmotic avoidance and increase dopamine signaling in C. elegans. ADHD is a neural disorder characterized by behavioral symptoms such as inattentiveness, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. Research shown a correlation between high sugar intake and its effects on ADHD diagnosis. Therefore, it is essential to investigate the relationship between diets and ADHD. In order to do that, we want to look at uh, neurotransmitter dopamine specifically, which plays a key role in mammalian nervous system. Um, study shows a strong correlation between dopamine deficiency and ADHD pathophysiology, and therefore, we aim to examine the effects of sugar on dopamine levels and further investigate whether ADHD-like behaviors will be induced. In this experiment, we used two different nematode strains, the N2 wild-type strain and the BZ55 EGLS1 mutant strain. We used these two nematodes in two assays, the osmotic ring assay and the observation of the Eggles-1 mutants. For the osmotic ring assay, we conducted to observe whether a glucose-rich diet would affect osmotic avoidance in the C. elegans. We did this by putting 204s from plates A, B, and C inside a ring and observing for 10 minutes whether they escaped to the ring. For observations of Eggles-1 mutants, we raised different um, mutants in the, our different concentration groups and compared the GFP expression pattern from their amphids and phasmids to see different levels of fluorescence intensity. This is the result for our osmotic ring assay. As you can see, the data is kind of inconsistent throughout the experiment. However, a general trend line shows an increased escape rate as the concentration of glucose increase. Our qualitative data also shows that the, rate, the worms raised on higher concentration of sugar are observed more on the edges of the barrier and more actively trying to escape the rings. For observation of the BC55 mutants, we generally do not see any um, results because there is a con consistency between all the concentrations of fluorescence intensity. And as expected on the N2 0.1M natural control, there was no um, there was no um, fluorescence intensity as expected. And as for our quantitative results from the osmotic ring assay, we cannot make any defin definitive statement on the effect of glucose impacting the osmotic avoidance of wild types of elegans. However, we generally see that on higher concentrations, there is a, they, nematodes escaped more consistently. However, this was significantly affected by our different sources of error. Overall, for the BC55 experiment, we cannot make any statement as to the relationship between glucose and dopaminergic activity in C. elegans, as the results do not show any differences in fluorescence intensity across concentrations. In connection to our previous year of research, our findings suggest that there is an effect on increased glucose consumption on the physiology of C. elegans. In conclusion, our study aims to discover the relationship between sugar and dopamine and their behavioral influence on C. elegans. We overall suggest that a glucose-rich diet can be a factor in ADHD behaviors like hyperactivity. However, our research do have three limitations. First, in the osmotic ring assay, the thickness of the 4M glucose barrier is inconsistent between different concentrations, which contributed to a high SEM as shown in figure two. Second, the sample size of the two worms per ring and three rings per concentration is also quite small to make adequate conclusion. Third, we want to increase our observation time for fluorescent intensity in future research and use softwares like ImageJ to analyze our images. Thank, Thank you. you.